it in the US, right? Good to go. Okay, great. Welcome. Does everybody hear me? Perfect. Um, I'd just like to welcome you all to uh, our Committee of the Whole meeting on October 20th at 3.30. We first would like to acknowledge the Uclua Thought First Nations on whose traditional territories the District of Uclua operates. And this is our first, second official meeting where we actually have their flag, but you can't see it. So we're quite, uh, quite happy to have their flag now in our council chambers. Also, um, audience members and delegates are advised that this proceeding is being conducted via Zoom and broadcast on YouTube. Zoom and YouTube may store data on foreign servers. Are there any additions to the agenda? Hearing and seeing none, looking for approval of the agenda. So moved. And second. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Mayor's announcement is a quick one. It's more of a bragging rights for probably all five of us. Just for you that may not know, we're at exactly at our halfway point today. Two years. So Happy big cheers to all, <laughs> all of you. And uh, cheers. And uh, yeah, there we go. And the the, uh, the new COVID cheers. Yeah. <laughs> no one's laughing. They no must not be hearing anything. And we thought we were pretty excited about that. <laughs> Oh God, two more years of this nonsense. Okay, <laughs> anyways, it'll go by quick. Um, now it's all about you guys. We're going to get into the public input delegations and um, a representative from each of the community group are invited to speak. It says three minutes. Chris Martin, we're going to take all the extra time and we're going to make sure that you have your full 22 minutes at the end and uh, undisturbed, of course. Um, but the big one is everybody is sometimes I know Broadwin, for example, you've called in and um, and if there's anybody else that would like to get back or running a household, just let me know. We'll, we'll, we'll put you in the front of the line. But basically, we will go in alphabetical order if you don't mind. But please speak up if you need to uh, bug out a little bit earlier. So, so Kathy could raise up her hand up. Okay, Kathy. Yeah, no problem. Is there any others that would like to get a little pushed up the ladder a little bit? And Kathy's with the... Perfect. Okay. Am I missing anything there? No. So I guess we'll just start with you, Broderick, if you don't mind. Thanks for phoning in. Yeah. There she is. Hi. I can't see anything. No, we can. <laughs> okay. Oh, there's Nicole. Okay. Hi, Nicole. Okay. So, hi. Okay. So, I am, this is my two minutes. Okay. So, I'm representing the Army and Navy. Um, we shut down hard at the beginning of mid-March there and um, have not been doing really anything up until the last month. We did um, have one live music show at, in July 25th that went very well with uh, limited seating. We had lots of um, social distancing and everything in place and it went really well, really well. People were, were um, happy to have something to go out to do. And then we stopped again because things were just getting funny again. So um, we just had a meeting yesterday and our, the Army and Navy is, is using this opportunity to really not be the bar and all of the things that we've trying to push towards other community events and stuff is, is where we're going to really work strongly towards now. So we have a food cart um, in for the winter and we're looking at getting um, application approved for a couple of more food carts at that location and then creating a, a central landscaped garden hub there as well for for people to have as a common area to to sit and stuff and as for community push like going out into the community where the free store that we did in the spring really worked well and we want to get that going again so um, that's going to be launching again soon and while it's not a big money making thing we are going to be switching it up a bit to have a, a bit of money coming in for that and um, otherwise as always the army and navy is open to all societies and every nonprofit committee in town to any 
way that you want to use our property and building, we would love to partner with anyone in town to help assist and support in in what anybody else is doing to, to create a, a stronger society culture in town that way. So um, our building has a hundred person capacity pre-COVID. We, depending on what's happening in there now with the Rangers are still meeting in there and, and we're happy for that. They're, they're happy with that. And so anybody that has any meetings or any things they want to do and don't have a space to do it in, we would like the both the outdoor parking lot, which is going to be getting revamped and being more user friendly for bodies as opposed to just cars. And as well as the building is is open for anybody to use in any way that they want to. So um, that's kind of just where the Army and Navy's at, at right now. We're working on a pretty shoestring budget, but um, with a bit of support from head command, we're hoping things continue forward and, and that we're, we're going to be there in the spring when things hopefully are a bit different. But right now we just really want to let ourselves be known to other groups that, that we're here for. We're here for you. And uh, yeah. Is that my two minutes? No, there's, it's two minutes, three minutes is just a guideline. Is there anything else oh, okay. you'd like to, is that it um, for you? Well. I'll ask you a couple of questions there, Broadwin, I guess. Um, yeah. Any questions from any counselors? Um, I should have backtracked. I missed one key element, Broadway. This was going to be important for you to listen to. And I think Mr. Boyson just would like to make a couple comments. Is that right, Mr. Mr. Boyson, just regarding uh, the grants and aid? Because we probably understand that uh, since March, a lot of you, uh, your original plans pre-COVID have probably changed. And uh, so I'll just hand it off to Mark there. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I just wanted to highlight for everybody here that... Um, uh, we usually provide an update here about the grant process. And so we have our grant applications for uh, council's uh, uh, money they've got allocated each year to contribute to community projects um, is due December 15th, as we've set up now consistently over the last couple of years. And uh, so one thing we wanted to highlight here, though, if there's a chance for you, if you did receive a grant this year and you would like to give us some an update about that or if you had any challenges with it we'd like to hear about those now or in the coming days just uh, to hear from you because we understand covid has um, uh, wrecked havoc on many plans and uh, so if you weren't able to uh, you know do everything you wanted to do with your project or you don't look like you're going to be able to complete it um, you just give us an early indication about it here right now. You don't, you're not being uh, on the on the witness stand here defending yourself. We just want to hear if you've had any challenges because it's something that we'd like to share with council and potentially consider extensions if needed. Yes. So, um, but for future, uh, also for 2021, you just, you know, we'll still be receiving applications and there's a plan for allocations for funding for that in the current budget plans as it stands right now. So, um, so yeah, keep that in mind. And there's, uh, so those applications are available online and, uh, and, uh, you can, I think we also send them out to everybody who's, uh, part of the societies normally anyway. So yeah. Okay. And I'm here for any questions throughout from the district's perspective during your presentations. I'm happy to answer them as well. So thanks for letting me intervene there, Mr. Mayor. Um, yes, we did receive a grant in aid. Thank you very much for that. I believe it was $1,600. And it was to be applied to renovations to the cenotaph. Um, right. We had had that planned to be completed for this year's Remembrance Day ceremony. Um, we spent the grant and aid on our mortgage payment and a hydro bill. Truth be told, um, we have note that we did spend that money on that, and we had plans actually in the process very soon to be starting the renovation on the cenotaph. Um, we've paused that in light of some conversations that we've had with district staff about the cenotaph. Um, there had been previous talk about it, it possibly being moved to a different location, which we were not receptive to in the past. And um, we are now receptive to that option. So um, two options would be we, we understand that we, we would be willing to pay back the grant and aid that we did not spend on the cenotaph. Um, if that's what you want, which is no problem. Well, I mean, we will pay it back. <laughs> and, um, or we spent it on the hydro bill and the mortgage and, and that's where it went. And we don't have a plan to apply for a grant and aid this year as we 
understand that the grant and aid is supposed to be for something that comes up unexpectedly and we don't have anything unexpected happening so we don't feel that we have any any um thing to ask for a grant and aid for at this point except for just generally speaking like but we know our mortgage bill is coming up type thing so um that's where we're at right now and i think the, the conversation about the senate half is a larger thing that i would like to have as a conversation with the community at large as well as the army and navy board and district because it is a, a larger community thing than than just us so we i don't feel that we should make a decision that's going to affect things for a long time nope thanks for that so mr mayor if i could just add a point there is just um i think if uh thank you for your honesty and uh um okay. i think uh um if you would like to if you do have concerns about your project being completed this year for any of the applicants if you could email us or send us a letter, but email finance at ucloid.ca and just explain the situation for us. We just want to hear how things are going. And if there's some issues, then we just we get a better understanding of all the uh, the projects where they're at. And then we can discuss that with council about how we want to proceed. So thank you for sharing that, Bronwyn. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Perfect. OK, well, thanks again for that update. And it's really important, like I know you were blatantly honest with the group here, and it just we want to hear the good, bad, and the ugly, and uh, so I appreciate your honesty. So you've set the bar quite high, Broadwin. Uh-oh. <laughs> so um, we'll just kind of keep moving along, as, unless there's any questions. Okay, um, I'm going to pass, uh, go to go, Kathy, you're top of the heat there, if you'd like to go next. I think Chris, oh, Chris is better. No. You're on mute, Kathy, you're on mute there, Chris. You're still on okay. mute. Nice. There we go. Okay. Bronwyn. Is Bronwyn yes. still on? Okay. Hi, Bronwyn. Um, it's Chris Martin from the Food Bank. And I would be really interested in if you guys have another free store opportunity. Um, and I'll get to this in my report, but um, because we shut our free store down, but I'm still getting requests to donate stuff. So as soon as you give me the green light, I will um, put the word out among um, the food bank people and um, we'll be able to get some donations because pretty much every week I get asked if we're t taking donations. So let me know yeah. when that's when you're ready. Yes, um, actually, with your encouragement, we will be ready sooner than later. So <laughs> okay, good. Awesome. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thanks. What, oh, there you are. What did I do? OK. <laughs> OK. Thank you. Okay, seeing no hands, oh, off to Kathy. There you go. Okay, can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. We're doing pretty good here at the daycare. Um, we've got two programs running now. We are licensed for the UAC Hall for our after-school program. It's running at max capacity, as in like 22 to 24 kids a day. Um, the group daycare is... We're kind of sitting at 16 right now. I'm just going to hold in this numbers until we see kind of what happens with COVID for the next little bit um, and plan to bump the numbers up probably in the spring a little bit. But we do have some wiggle room right now to address three and four year olds, but not under threes. Um, our major fundraiser is the Breakfast with Santa. So that's kind of a little... Barb just came back this week, so I just kind of had a first conversation. Chris is already on me looking for details. I do have a board meeting this week. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I'm seeing a green screen concept maybe for Breakfast with Santa pictures. I, I just, I don't actually see, I don't see how this is going to work yet, but I haven't given it up completely. And then we're just focused now on our outside area, um, which putting together a proposal of what we'd like to see happen with our yard to present that to mayor and council to see where they're at on our ideas. And we're going for a massive grant through the co-op to try and get our outdoor play space taken care of. Otherwise, we're doing really well. We've hired a housekeeper. Um, we're, we've hired a bookkeeper through the West Coast Resources Society. We're partnering up, not through the society, but the society let me borrow their bookkeeper to pay on the side to help us out with our books and um, my board did not turn over this year I have all the same board members and we're doing really well that's it questions 
Any questions? No, we're really happy to hear that. And it's always nice to hear that uh, confirmation in your voice, Kathy, that uh, things are going in the right direction. So yeah, we're, we're doing okay. Yeah, we're pleased to hear that. And thanks for um, probably navigating. This is, I know it's been stressful on a personal note for you going through, uh, you know, daycare and COVID and kids and everything else. And the way you guys navigate through that this summer, I just really want to, uh, again, just do an additional shout out that yeah, the community truly appreciates your guys' commitment and, Thank you. and uh, it's, you know, it keeps, keeps the town rolling. So thanks again for doing that. Thank you. No questions, Chris, are we good? I love Chris. Okay. Oh, Marcy, Alberti Clackwood Health Network. Welcome. Thank you. Um, so for the Alberni Clyquet Health Network, the fall is always a bit of a busy time for us. Um, we are currently going through recruitment for our table of partners, um, I guess leadership table. So that's a small group of individuals from the Alberni Clyquet region. So from the Alberni Valley, Barclay Sound regions, and then here on the West Coast, we're looking for strong voices from our communities to help inform decisions around social determinants of health. And so that's the action planning and um, projects that we take on in order to um, really build health within our, within our region and our communities. So that recruitment process is ongoing until uh, I think it's December 10th. I can send that application um, to Nicole for further distribution. We are looking for some additional West Coast um, representatives on that table. Um, and then outside of that, there's always opportunities through our working groups and the other various um, different activities, community engagements um, that we are taking part in. <clears throat> Um, additionally, we are working on a poverty reduction action plan. So that's taking up the majority of our time right now. Um, this is a project that we are taking on for the Alberni Clyquat Regional District again. So Alberni Valley, Barclay and the West Coast. And it is funded through UBCM. So we got a $25,000 grant to pull together an action plan, um, which includes community engagement, policy review, um, and then recommendations to our municipalities and regional government around how we can collectively move forward um, and start moving the dial on poverty reduction in our region. Or building prosperity, um, as, uh, as we've very nicely called it. <clears throat> So you may have seen the posters for this survey uh, out in the community on social media. Please, if you can, if you have a good network, help us to distribute those. We will be running our community engagement until December, recognizing that with COVID, we're not able to do focus groups and um, large forums. So trying to get the information out as much as possible. And anybody, we really do welcome anybody to take the survey, uh, just ensuring that people's voices are heard within that, uh, no matter what their uh, socioeconomic status is. Uh, it's great to get all voices included, especially within the online survey. In addition to the online survey, to gather more information from people with lived experience, we're partnering with local organizations, uh, Chris and Margaret. Um, there is money coming for you in the mail. <laughs> um, Chris, I have survey templates for you. We're doing active listening templates um, so that these organizations that are already having connection with individuals that, that have some um, challenges to prosperity, um, have an ability to really tell their story um, and we can collect that information. Um, so we also have some gift cards and coffee cards to make sure that people's time is honored um, throughout that process. Um, out here, we got some co-op cards. In the Alberni Valley, we've, uh, we're giving out bus passes and coffee cards. Um, so just making sure that people are well taken care of for telling their stories um, and all that information is going to come together with all of my reviews of all the OCPs and other incredibly, incredibly fun policy that I get to review over the next couple months um, into a big action plan for for our region this spring. And so that will also be distributed for anybody who's interested. Uh, we'll make sure to um, ensure that it's within each one of the municipalities hands so they can distribute it as well. 
Yeah, and I think that that's about it for the ACHN. I can also give a quick update on uh, West Coast Inland Search and Rescue if you'd like. Yeah, please do. Go ahead. All right. Uh, so West Coast Inland Search and Rescue. Um, this winter, we were happy to welcome about 16 new members. Um, so that's been working out really well for us. Um, we were able to start training again um, this summer, I think early August, we were able to start doing, um, figuring out in-person training. And so we've managed to really organize ourselves. And so you might see us around with our masks and full, full gear, um, figuring out how we can train in person. Uh, we've also been doing quite a number of Zoom sessions. Um, and we were lucky to see a, re a extreme reduction in calls from May to June. So we were really happy to not be putting our team out um, in the field and into situations that they may not have been comfortable with until we had the opportunity to train in person. Um, but we, since August, we've seen an increase um, to a more regular um, pace for calls. Um, we've called out the team a number of times and then also had a, our, our normal amount of uh, calls in which we get called out and then immediately stood down. So that's been, it's been good to have the time to get prepared and ensure that everybody's comfortable with our new uh, working procedures. Um, and I think this year we will be also discussing doing a, a soft intake uh, this winter. So we're going to be discussing how we're going to do that. Uh, if you know people that are interested, um, you can advise them to talk to one of the team members and or send us an application. We're kind of looking at uh, ensuring that we have a new member intake a little bit more regularly so that we get burnt out less, less regularly as well. And that's all for us. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. I'm just curious, what is the uh, current headcount of your members of that group? We are at about 38 operational members. Um, regularly, I would say we see about um, 20 members regularly. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thanks. Any questions for Marcy? Thanks, Marcy. I really look forward to seeing um, the OCPs that you're going to be on your desk there. Yes, you'll need lots of coffee probably to get through some of those, but um, it'll be an interesting to see what the product looks like in the spring. So I look forward to that. Second time I've reviewed all the OCPs for the region in, uh, in the last year and a half. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Okay, I don't see any questions for you. Thanks again, Marcy. Appreciate it. Central West Coast Forest Society. Mandela, are you on? It's all good. Come back. No, that's totally good. Um, Chamber of Commerce. Oh, you don't have your, your new your replacement? Well, just wait. Just wait. Okay, go ahead. Huh. Hi, guys. Um, I just want to give a little bit of update for the Chamber of Commerce. Um, we received a grant of $60,000 through the Rural Opportunities Fund, which um, uh, we st started with um, Community Futures. Thank you very much for Community Futures. And it's called the Consulting Hive. So we have a website and we're working with all the businesses across BC because a lot of chambers, you know, they had to go to volunteer or shut their doors. So there's a lot of businesses that have been needing our help. So um, the Akula Chamber has been actively working with a few um, other municipalities, helping them with wage subsidies and so forth. We have also Contracts are signed for the next six months for our staff housing, so that is full again for the next six months, which is wonderful. But most importantly, I want to say that the Chamber has recently hired a new Executive Director. I will be stepping down um, in m that position, and Lori is our new ED, and she starts tomorrow. So there she is. It's, gonna be, it's so exciting. I'm so excited to be able to welcome her. She's going to be great for the community. That's it. Thank you so much, Lara. I'm really, really excited as well. Where is she? I don't see her. Check. There she is. 
Oh, there you go. It's like the Brady Bunch there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> No, we're all excited to, to see the change, and I think I've said it jokingly a few times, but the biggest struggle for this is for Lara not to actually get in the kitchen with you every second day trying to tell you how to do it, so it'll be good. And I think we're all, we're all looking forward to a bit of a change and uh, a positive change, so we wish you nothing but uh, success, and it'll be good. Chambers, uh, Chambers has been uh, definitely a big rock for the community. You know, pre-COVID here, I guess it's an opportunity to thank the groups here as you guys are all standing here. And, I, you know, Lara and all the groups here, we've gone through some really challenging times. I think it's when we think where we were seven months ago to where we are today, I don't think that we any thought we're going to be, you know, at least breathing um, or a bit of a sigh of relief. So, again, you've done a wonderful job, Lara, and uh, and just seeing you do a, a transition to somebody else is also a good thing. So, yeah. thank you. Nothing? Nothing? Okay. No questions? Clackwit Biosphere Trust. I did see Rebecca. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, just a few things to share from CBT. Uh, the, in terms of fall granting, uh, Neighborhood Small Grants is open right now, and the deadline is at the end of the month. Um, the CBT did receive a grant in aid from the District of Ukulet to support uh, youth applications to neighborhood small grants. So, um, yeah, encourage youth in Ukulet to apply. And that's moving forward as planned. We had the spring COVID recovery uh, NSG, and we, I know we had a couple of youth applications then, and I anticipate we'll have more in this fall round as well. Uh, we're also delivering a national granting program called the Emergency Community Support Fund, and we have $30,000 allocated to our region uh, for organizations that are uh, supporting vulnerable populations during COVID response. So um, please take a look at our website or the national website. Uh, we had $30,000 allocated in the spring as well, and I think at the time we made four grants, so I think this time we're thinking of a few more smaller projects uh, to spread the, the funding a bit further. Um, the Biosphere Center is uh, moving through the development phase. So we had purchased a lot in Tofino uh, last year and we're now going through the rezoning process. And we've moved through the first of four steps with the District of Tofino last week. So we have uh, moved past permission to proceed and that's exciting for us and exciting for that vision of having another community hub with meeting spaces and office and uh, within the region. Uh, the Euclid appointment, I thought to update on that, I know Jeff is on the line. He's our, dis uh, Jeff Lyons is our district of Euclid uh, appointed member to the CBT board and then Rochelle is our alternate. And Jeff will reach the end of his second term in March of next year. And so I just put a flag out there that we'll be requesting a new appointment in the new year. Uh, he's done an awesome job of uh, participating in the board all of this time and bringing his experience with capital projects to the CBT. And he's currently the co-chair along with Jeff Lyons. So super grateful for his continued volunteer time. He'll reach the end of it, his eighth year in the new year. So that's the maximum that we can have a board member with us. Um, and we'll be requesting someone, again, with probably that, fo that focus on sustainable development and biodiversity conservation and asking the district to go through a public process to identify a new volunteer to the CBT. And Rochelle, her term is slightly different. She's one year behind, I think, in her term. So there won't be a change in the alternate director appointment. And then the last thing, a major focus for us this fall is on what's called the UNESCO Periodic Review. So every 10 years, UNESCO reviews its designated sites to ensure that we're meeting the standards of the program. And uh, we have no doubts that we're continuing to meet the standards, but also that there's opportunities for us to re-engage folks and to learn through this process. So I've been in touch with many folks uh, we're completing what's called a self-study. So uh, it's sort of a, I would call it a massive undertaking for our staff and our board and volunteers to provide input on the last 10 years of development in the region and what we've learned, what's changed, that sort of thing. And we have to submit new maps of the biosphere region. So it's quite all encompassing for our team. And we wanna have support from the region as we move through that. So we've requested letters from many of the nonprofits on the call already. And then the next stage is to request uh, support for the continued designation from all of the participating communities. So the District of Euclid is one of those communities. And uh, I would expect uh, in the next couple of weeks that I'll be submitting a formal request for your support to continue having the UNESCO designation in our region. 
that's it for me. Thanks, Rebecca. Any questions for Rebecca? No plugs from you, Councillor Cole. I know you're. I know <laughs> you're just happy. That's good. Well, thanks, Rebecca, and uh, it's great to see. Um, unfortunately, you're building in you're building in Tofino, and uh, and I think you get to appreciate the levels of uh, bureaucracy trying to build a commercial building. So I can only uh, sympathize with some of the challenges before you guys, but uh, hopefully you'll get through it quickly. <laughs> Thank you, and we're definitely continuing to maintain our Euclid office space, so you won't miss us there either. Or more imp more opportunities in Euclid, we're keen to participate as well. No, we and we, we totally value um, um, your organization and what you do to the to the entire region. So thank you. Okay, girl guides, let's talk cookies and everything in between, chocolate or vanilla. It's actually mint right now. Oh. Um, so <laughs> Margaret's happy. Um, so it's been a very um, interesting year for guiding. Um, we had to take all of our in-person meetings in the spring and move them to online, which really did prove a bit challenging for the girls, especially because of the whole um, spirit of the Sisterhood of Guiding is bringing these young ladies together to grow in leadership skills. Um, but they really did well. The leaders who were working at the time donated a lot of time to try and keep um, these activities engaging so that the girls would come back week after week so that we didn't lose them. Um, we started our guiding season in September. Um, we are a bit smaller than we have been. Um, last year we had 10 pathfinders. There was 10 girl guides last year. Um, We've got six Pathfinders right now. Um, and then with Girl Guides, I think they have a total of five. They've got three Girl Guides and actually two Brownies. So we've got some Brownies happening. Um, the Girl Guides of Canada, um, the rules that they put in place for us are incredibly strict probably. And it's really because this is a national uh, organization. So it is different all across the country. So they tried to make it the same for everybody. Um, so when we returned in September, we weren't allowed to meet indoors. Um, we were fortunate that um, we were definitely had some good weather. We haven't had too many rainouts, but as the days are becoming darker um, and meeting in the evenings is a little bit more challenging. However, I got exciting news today. Um, the West Coast were being allowed to move to indoor meetings for our girls as we head into the darker days, which I know some of the girls are going to be happy about too because it is pretty chilly outside in the evenings. Um, we, yeah, we're still trying to do some fundraising. We um, initially, Girl Guides of Canada um, cancelled their cookie order and they weren't going to do cookies in the fall because again, um, they didn't want the girls going out door to door or being in groups and selling their cookies. But um, if anybody noticed, or for those of you that we've shared it with, um, Girl Guide cookies are available online this year. So Girl Guides of Canada is moving into the, the modern world and you can order your cookies online and they'll be delivered to your house. Um, we had some girls who were supposed to be going away to Ecuador in March. That trip has now been canceled for those. Um, there's actually, Seven girls total, three from Tofino, four from Euclid, who were supposed to travel to an Ecuadorian um, service project. That's been pushed to 2022 for them. So they're all still working hard to do their fundraising for their trip. Their trip is now being moved to Thailand um, because they were actually supposed to be going um, to a WE organization in Ecuador. So that got changed um, for a lot of reasons which has been interesting to explain to the girls why that's changing, but um, they're very excited that they're going to be going to Thailand for 15 days, hopefully in 2022, if we're allowed. Um, but yeah, so we're moving forward. The girls were really excited. They're excited. They're engaged um, and trying to make the best of, of what they've got, but it really is an outlet for these young ladies to get together and just do something different and not think about all the other things. Um, we won't have any camps or anything this year. Um, and yeah, but as we move to indoors, I know that the girl guides will be using the UAC hall. They will actually take their slot and use the UAC hall, which I know um, thanks to the district for doing that grant and aid and waiving our rental fees for us. Um, the pathfinders are actually using Hartwood Kitchen. 
um, and using the restaurant when it's closed as their meeting space because we can't have the two groups together. They do meet at the same time on Monday evenings from six until about 7.30. Um, but yeah, we're just moving forward. The girls are having fun. We're trying to do some different things. It's, yeah, I think that's all we've got. <laughs> So buy our cookies. Thank you. <laughs> I imagine some of the parents are probably happy that uh, it's online. They don't have to do the old, uh, you know, uh, endless, endless hours of, uh, I know I don't think that. But. No, I disagree because I remember fondly selling um, back before Matterson House was Matterson House and selling cookies up and down Peninsula and getting a little badge for selling the most one year. And yeah. I still appreciate the knock on the door and yay, where's some cash? So I'm sad about that part, okay, but cool. I'm happy like about that. everything else. Yeah. You probably still have a badge too, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> the girls love selling their cookies in person. And that is one thing they look forward to every year is the ability to either stand outside the co-op and get to see all their favorite locals and family and friends. And then they do still enjoy that selling door to door thing. There's something about that personal connection. Wonderful. Yep. Hi, Heather, it's Marilyn. Um, are, are they not able to sell their cookies at the co-op even if they were wearing masks? Unfortunately, Girl Guides of Canada has said that we can't do that. So we do have to follow the national rules. And again, it's even though we're really fortunate out here um, and we could probably do it. I know our parents are comfortable, um, but these are the national rules that they've sent to us. And and we have to do what everybody else across the country is doing. I'm oh, sorry. Just a quick question, Heather. Uh, Jennifer here. Um, last, in the spring, you sold some of the cookies at the co-op without the girls being there. We just had them like on the as a display in the in the deli. Is that going to be an option as well? Perhaps for those people that don't do online. Um, I don't know. We're we're hoping to get a few cases into our own hands that we can even just like do if people message us or we connect, we can do deliveries. Um, the it was great that the co-op um, took some of our cookies. That again was part of an, a national initiative. Um, so nationally, Girl Guides of Canada recalled all the cookies sort of back to the mothership. Um, and then they were dispersed. Um, co-op was wonderful. They took some cases off our hands, both in Eucalula and Tofino. Um, I know that Save On Foods, London Drugs, Canadian Tire, all of these um, stores were wonderful and actually put our cookies on their shelves and then gave us all the funds from them. Um, it, was, it was amazing that they helped us really get our, our fundraising done for us. Well, if you need help facilitating that, if it can happen, I'm happy to chatter with higher ups. Thank you very much. Awesome. And thanks for your commitment there, Heather. I know it's a, it's a group, it's a small group, but uh, it takes a couple of dedicated parents like yourself to keep that, uh, that flag off the ground. And I appreciate that you're keeping it going. Thank you. It's yeah, well, and especially now the Ministry of Education, for those of you who don't know, the Ministry of Education last year, actually, um, when you complete the Pathfinder program, you're awarded your Canada Accord. And then the Rangers is what comes after Pathfinders. Um, when you complete that and receive your Ranger Award, the BC Ministry of Education now recognizes that if you complete those programs, each of those programs are worth two high school credits which is essentially two courses. So it's really motivating to kind of help these girls for an hour and a half of meeting a week and some of their service projects and other things that they do, um, that this will actually help them complete their schooling. That's great, even better. Okay. Next I have Pacific Rim Art Society. I think I saw Sue. Hi, I didn't expect to be so quick. And I was just drooling over those cookies thinking I've got to order some. Um, okay, so obviously Praz had to cancel a lot of our activities over the last few months um, because just about everything we do um, really brings communities together and people together. And it's always 
uh, in person. So we've had some um, interesting discussions about where we go from here and how we provide programming uh, in the next little while. So uh, we'll probably do quite a bit online. Um, we'll be doing some uh, art pro artist profiles, uh, going out to the artist and doing um, some video videography, whatever, and um, sort of bringing the artist to you. So watch our Facebook and online for that. Um, we did bring in the drive-in, which was great. Um, it was very expensive. So um, it would be great to maybe work with the district and see if we can't uh, find some funding to um, purchase some of that equipment ourselves and, and put on monthly drive-ins. Because I think it really worked out well, but um, the cost is very prohibitive to, to do it on an ongoing basis. Um, Missoula this year is in January, the end of January. And because they are an American company that needs to cross the border, they have not been able to, well, obviously come across. We're still waiting to find out what happens after November 21st um, and see if they're going to be allowed in. At that point, we'll have to make the decision whether we cancel them altogether or not. Um, but at this point, the deposit has been made and we're still kind of gearing that they'll be able to come through. But again, with all those kids gaggling and rehearsing, we're not even sure we'll be allowed to do it. So that's kind of up in the air at the moment. Um, our AGM is November 8th. It'll be online on Zoom. Um, because it's so close to Remembrance Day, there'll be a special um, Remembrance Day thing that <laughs> Jacqueline Carmichael and Jeff Johnson are doing for us. So um, I won't announce anything yet, but well, basically, it's kind of like a big Zoom uh, where everybody's reading in Flanders Fields and they're going to compilate it and make it like one big chorus of people reading the poem. So we'll be sending out an email to all of you. Uh, hopefully one or more of you will want to uh, film yourself reading that poem, send it to us, and we'll be doing a video with everybody. That's kind of cool. Um, grants and aid. <laughs> Well, we'll be sending you a letter because, um, yeah, our budgets just kind of went out the window with what we were wanting to do. So we use them in other ways, but we'll definitely send a letter updating where and what we've used the money for. Um, and hopefully we'll have programming for next year as well. Um, and I think that's about it. And just a, a quick update, just because I am the chair of Community Futures, Alberti Clayquat. Um, thank you to Lara and uh, the Yakula Chamber because as part of the Hive, they really have done a lot of um, extraneous uh, support to some of the local businesses across BC. And there's only eight of them that are part of this um, Hive infrastructure for support. So uh, Lara's done a lot of work and we just really wanted to thank her for that. Um, Community Futures actually had over 60 applications for the uh, rural fund. And I think we ended up giving out over a million dollars in, in uh, short-term loans or in you know, uh, COVID support loans. So that's it. Perfect, thank you, Sue. You're welcome. Any questions? Sue, make, please make sure that we all get the invite to do the reading of In Flanders Field because all of us have been nodding and saying that we're interested. So, Awesome. It'll be a lot of work for Jeff Johnson, but he's up for it. So I will send it all to you. Um, and it will be the ARUG. I Sorry. joined late, so I just wanted to let you know I'm here. Kathy. Okay, thank you, Kathy. Um, the Flanders Field thing will be on our AGM uh, Zoom, but it'll also be live streamed on Facebook too. Just to let you guys all know. Wonderful. Definitely a challenging um, March, and uh, right when you guys are about to start off your season, I know that it landed on its nose, and it's good to see that your group is finding creative ways to, to keep the, the doors open and keep that um, the subject matter alive. 
and yeah you know you'll you'll provide a report back to the district to mark and his staff and uh again there's no uh there's no surprises we're not trying to ask you to hide anything that's gone on it's just that this is just a situation that's out of everybody's hands and it, and for some of you it's definitely a, a matter of survival so we're just here to make sure that you know in six months from now that you're all still sitting here with us and as we kind of continue on forward so thanks again for your commitment to the art society thanks Mako. okay i don't see any other questions pacific rim whale festival society um i believe that's supposed to be me that is yep. you Lori. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, so, uh, as so, 2020 was supposed to be our big comeback year, um, and we had a really awesome festival plan. There was tons of work that went into it, and we had a great lineup of events, and we were really excited for it. Um, but unfortunately, I think it was just a couple days before um, before the first event that we ended up having to cancel the the festival. Um, so we actually just met a couple weeks ago um, as a society, and we are all seem to be pretty excited about creating a 2021 festival. Um, it's going to look quite different and we um, are still working through what that's going to look like exactly. We're definitely talking about a much shorter festival uh, with much fewer events and obviously those events would be very um, COVID friendly um, and maybe making sure that we have a lot of plans in place just in case um, just in case things do change. Have a lot of online options as well so that we can still um, yeah, educate and reach a large audience while um, potentially dealing with new COVID protocols. Um, so I guess the biggest thing we're struggling with right now is that because we had planned our festival in its entirety, um, we spent um, pretty much all of our funds. So we're working through grants right now to try to um, make just a little bit of money so that we could we can start the planning of the 2021 festival, but we are really optimistic about it. And uh, our AGM is on November 14th. It will also be a Zoom call. Um, so it would be great to have as much um, support and uh, voices as possible just to hear what, what people might think we could do in 2021. Thanks, Lori. Any questions for Lori? Yeah, I know timing couldn't have been any worse for your group. Um, Lori, are you going to still play a role with the group when you work for the chain when you're with the chamber? Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's great. No, that that makes things a lot easier when uh, the chamber executive is connected to other things like like this. It definitely makes things uh, streamlined. So um, we look forward to 2021, and I guess um, we'll see what what that holds. And it's good to see that um, the community is very supportive of your organization. Keep us posted. Are you still, you, were you involved in that? You were involved in that for how many years? And you're not anymore? No. You are still? Okay, okay, perfect. Yeah, we have been using like two months a year. Oh, perfect. Okay, great. Even better there. You got uh, Kelsey McEwen on, on board as well. So hearing and seeing no questions, we'll be off to perfect timing, Kathy. Off to you, Seaview C Senior Society, Forest Glen. Um, I must say that um, I'm sorry I'm I'm late for this. It's been a bit of a you know one of those shows around here today. Um, but it, it's um, it's been a very very interesting um, however many months it's been now for Forest Glen because of, of course we um, were practically locked down from the beginning. I think it was March 11th that we just shut things down. Um, and you know, our, our activities were really, um, they had so much momentum at that point and we'd been working on it for over a year and um, with the help of, of many, um, it had been very successful. And then it just, everything here has been just flattened since then. Um, we have none of the Sunshine Club activities. We have very little inside activities. Um, our residents are, um, a majority of them are lucky enough to be able to go out on their own and as independent people. But um, because of our affiliation with um, um, Island Health and uh, the province with our assisted living registry, um, 
we have had to comply with a lot of new legislation and um, to, um, to document and um, report on so much that it is probably uh, two times again, the administration here. And um, so in order to manage that and manage the screening and greeting that has to go on here every day, seven days a week, um, and uh, the, the lack of being able to do events and whatnot, we've really changed um, our model, not because we wanted to, but because we had to. So we've created some other ways to do some things. And we've been so fortunate to have some friends of Forest Glen who are um, quietly contributing some things that will bring up the morale around here and uh, keep a good eye on, on uh, making sure that with all the extra administration we have, we're not missing out on just the safety and security and the morale of our residents. So we've had um, some... Um, activities that have been quite fun. We had a, a big barbecue um, with some of our board members and uh, and all of our residents for some social distancing outside, big barbecue in the parking lot out in front. And, and Jiggers has been here twice and they have, they've actually um, insisted that they come, which has been kind of fun because both times people got really, really stoked about that. So that's kind of what the disposition like is like around here. Um, we're just trying to keep our heads above water in terms of the reporting requirements and, and whatnot. Um, so we have changed gears a little bit um, in order of activities and what our needs are right now, but we do want to get back to our uh, activities when it's possible. So we are, we are hoping to continue to um, raise funds for uh, the future. And in the meantime, one of the projects we have going on is that we were um, given a grant from um, CBT to uh, work with the district and, um, and uh, our, our own staff in putting together a community warming center for seniors in the, in the um, event of emergency um, services needs, um, you know, earthquake, uh, extended power outage and all of those things. So we are working toward that now. We're working with uh, Rick uh, Gettys and with um, the support of our emergency people around town with uh, Rochelle and with our community nurse leaders so that we can put together a, a program that suits the emergency services BC um, protocols and um, requirements to have that center here. So that's kind of our off, off season, off kilter um, project right now. And, uh, and we'll be um, very soon, hopefully we'll have a little die down in our requirements here for a bit, um, getting some information out to the community about that. And we'll definitely keep you in the loop with it because it will involve, um, you know, that it's best interest, um, Kind of thing. So um, that's what's been going on here. Um, we've been, of course, uh, sharing. Um, we do occasionally with food bank and, and whatnot. We do some things for the residents and for the, the contract cook here and keep things kind of um, interesting. And, and uh, uh, that's, that's kind of all I have right now. We will get something from us. Um, um, as we go forward with any requests and uh, any advancement in our um, efforts to digest what it might take to put some more units here in the future. Um, we've put some advertising out to seniors in the West Coast to see what their interest might be in the next three to five, six years. Um, if they, if just to see what kind of interest it would generate in them saying to us, yeah, you know, I'm thinking that I might be interested in that in five years or, you know, so that's just, um, that's an ongoing project. It's a, it's a um, subcommittee for the board of directors. So they are moving on that um, kind of snail pace, which everything seems to be in this COVID day and age. Um, so that's, um, that's all I have for right now. If there's any questions. 
Thank, thanks, Kathy. Kathy, do have a hand? No? Okay. I think everybody misses the little, your little, like everything else we miss in life right now, but um, really the gathering of your hub, how um, it was just really, really something special for a lot of those people that participated in there. And it's great to see that you're trying to still continue that with outside activities. Obviously, the weather's changing, but um, definitely your hub is... Uh, Definitely a hub for a lot of people in this community, and, and it's good to see that uh, it continues forward. Thank you. Nothing. Uh, I think Councillor. I uh, know. I just wanted to say I'm I'm excited to see the um, plans for the expansion moving forward. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, yeah, it is. Uh, it's a ways off. We've been going through the process of um, of uh, some consulting and. Um, um, Randy Alua and um, um, Deanne Harskamp are kind of leading the charge on that to just keep it moving along um, to a point where it becomes uh, realistic or not realistic. And a lot of that depends on um, what's going on with the economy too. So we're keeping the, our options open. Wonderful, and uh, keep us posted, you know, just any kind of information. Do. I know you are, and I believe. Joseph, are you still on that board? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so we do have an inside scoop there, and I know Joseph does give me a little bit of an unofficial update from time to time, <laughs> which is great. All right, thanks. Yeah, thank you, Kathy. Okay, no questions for Kathy. Surf rider, Pacific Rim. Oh, sorry, Emily, I know you, sorry, probably with that. Emily, you want to slide ahead? Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Thanks very much for that. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, yeah, my name is Emily Coombs. I'm the patrol commander for the Ukulich Canadian Ranger Patrol. And um, just wanted to give you all a bit of an update um, as to what has been going on and what we have going forward in the next few months. Uh, so the 4th Canadian Ranger Patrol Group, uh, which encompasses all the four Western provinces from BC to Manitoba, uh, just recently wrapped up our uh, Operation Laser, which uh, maybe you, you may have seen, uh, you know, in the news that was uh, a five-month um, operation that the military was uh, undertaking throughout the kind of initial COVID period. Uh, so we had um, eight of our rangers from the Ukulip Patrol who were on a full-time Class C contract. And um, the operation saw patrols from across the entire group um, conducting tasks requested by their communities. So um, tasks that uh, range anywhere from food procurement, uh, like hunting, gathering, fishing, uh, to provide food for their communities, especially First Nation communities in the Northern uh, parts of the province, to uh, distributing um, food kits brought into remote communities, to staffing emergency operations centers uh, and various other things in between as well. Uh, as So the uh, operation wrapped up at the end of August and the uh, um, Canadian Armed Forces is continually monitoring the COVID situation to determine if, um, if another operation laser is, is warranted um, for, for you know, the coming months. Um, locally, the uh, Ukulip Patrol has been um, authorized to conduct rapid damage assessment and light urban search and rescue training, which is really exciting for us. Uh, it's something that we've been asking for for several years now. And, um, you know, we're, we're fortunate, very fortunate in that we have lots of amazing organizations, you know, anywhere from West Coast Inland Search and Rescue to RCM SAR, um, Canadian Coast Guard, uh, Fire Rescue, BCAS, um, but I think the Canadian Rangers are well poised to fill this sort of gap that there is uh, currently for, um, you know, especially rapid damage assessment for, you know, in the event of a, a major earthquake where there's substantial damage being done to these buildings. So, you know, all of our uh, best laid plans for, you know, ESS services and whatnot are kind of all for naught if, if we're not allowed to go into these buildings. So. Um, this is a, the idea that we put forward to our chain of command and they've authorized this. So uh, this training is happening next month. And so we'll be in Euclid, which is um, 
even better because normally the training is down at uh, CFB Esquimalt. Uh, so, um, you know, the, the advantage being that now we have the instructor coming here and we get firsthand, uh, you know, knowledge and experience with our town itself and, you know, what we're going to be dealing with, um, you know, in the event of some kind of catastrophic uh, earthquake and or tsunami. Uh, so that's pretty exciting. And um, so the, the kind of bigger picture for that kind of training as well is that eventually that training gets uh, rolled out to more patrols across the island initially, and then as well further, uh, you know, up the coast and then deeper into the interior of the, of the province. And then um, with the idea that there'll be, um, you know, BC company wide anyway, um, exercises where we can conduct training and just, you know, keep, keep up to date on, on all of those skills. So that's coming up uh, 19th to 20th of November. There will also be some other uh, staff members from Esquimalt um, or Victoria coming for that training as well. So you may see some, uh, some dudes walking around in their army uniforms and whatnot. So that's what's going on that weekend. So there'll be almost all of the Ukulip patrol there. So there's 20 of us right now. So I think I've got um, at least 15 of us are going to be there. And then I think five to 10, uh, you know, the, of our green staff, we call them, that are also going to be here. So if you see us walking around, that's why. Um, and uh, the other thing coming up uh, in January, we have our uh, urban patrol exercise. So this is an exercise uh, where we're basically hoping to meet with uh, mayor and council, and as well as some other key players uh, within the community, as well as um, confirming some of the uh, points that we have in our local area resource resort report. And, um, you know, just determining um, Things that we've recorded uh, as far as our infrastructure and whatnot goes on. Um, so yeah, so I'll, I'll be looking to get in touch with with you guys um, in the next couple of weeks, I think, to hopefully set up some meetings in, in January if that works out. So and um, yeah, that's about all we have going on for the Canadian Rangers. So thank you. There's definitely lots going on. Mm -hmm. That's great to hear and it's just great to see how many heads uh, or how many people that are participating and we look forward to the training and seeing you guys walking around town. Mm -hmm. We also have, um, um, I've got six new applications out for some new rangers and five of them are in Bamfield. So that's really exciting that we have sort of a whole kind of con contingent over, uh, over the other side of the, of the water as well. So that's a really beneficial addition for us. That's great, Emily. Yeah, Bernie, that's the juniors. Yeah, this is all adults you're talking about, correct? That was the correct, question. yes. Okay, well, thanks, Emily, and uh, we'll let you cut off uh, early. And again, thank you for your commitment to the community and taking on that training. Definitely hope we never have to use it, but uh, um, nonetheless, it's good to know that we'll have some trained people around town. So thanks again. Absolutely, thank you. Surf Rider, I think I asked if Surf Rider was in the house. Yeah, yeah, that would be me. Okay, sorry, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name's Nicole and I'm the chapter coordinator for Surf Rider Pacific Rim. I think it was Lily that was originally supposed to be on this call, but she asked me to step in and give you guys the updates instead. So it's nice to meet everyone and put some faces to names and hear everyone else's updates and what's been going on. Um, so yeah, for starters, for us, as with everyone, I'm sure this year, just like threw everyone such a huge curveball, and it was awesome to be able to pivot a lot of our operations to still be maintaining, um, you know, meaningful change on plastics and cleaning beaches in the region. And so one of the first things that we did was we partnered with the Marine Debris Tracker app, which is a citizen science app that anyone can download. And when you go out and you do a solo beach clean, you're able to track the data on what you found. And this all goes into a central uh, Surfrider Pacific Rim database. And it allows us to still be collecting data from beach cleans to find out what we're finding on beaches and tackle these issues at the source while we're not able to host um, actual events and beach cleans during COVID to adhere to um, our headquarters 
new like COVID regulations and rules on events. And so that's been really awesome. And we've been, really been pushing the solo beach cleans and for people to be taking out the marine debris tracker app and contributing their data. And it's been going really well. We've already had thousands of items logged in the Pacific Rim. And it just goes to show us like what the biggest culprits are that we're finding on beaches this year. And it goes to help us you know, decide what we need to be focusing our efforts on um, when it comes to creating regulatory changes and advocating for that. So that's been going really well. Um, we've also launched two projects with tribal parks. So the first is the Take Back the Tap um, campaign. And this is the goal to eliminate all single use plastic water bottles for sale and distribution in the Pacific Rim. And so we've been working with businesses and getting them signed on to it. And we're hoping to add this to the uh, single use plastics regulation. Um, our second project what is what also, that is also with tribal parks is tackling the issue of open foam flotation devices that some docks in Tofino and Euclid and the surrounding areas are still using. The open foam is, it breaks off, it breaks down over time and it leaches onto shorelines and beaches and into marine and terrestrial ecosystems. And so uh, with tribal parks, we're working with them to get these, uh, get these foam docks removed and replaced with something that is more sustainable. So those are our new projects with them, which we're really excited to uh, continue on in the upcoming year. Um, another update on the campaigns, our hold on to our hold on to your buck campaign has collected and recycled almost 1 million cigarette butts from the Pacific Rim, which is a huge number and it's come from it's come from parking lots beaches in town and as one of the biggest culprits worldwide. Um, it's awesome to see all of those being not just collected and taken off the street and off the beaches, but being recycled and given a second chance at life. Uh, we've partnered with TerraCycle in Ontario and they take all the butts and turn them into a butt-based lumber. And we've also partnered with um, Aftanas who is shaping us a surfboard out of uh, recycled butts. And we're gonna do a huge promo video with that for the campaign. So that's gonna be exciting as well coming up. And um, another update is that we are working on a new textile recycling system for the coast. So currently 17% of what goes to landfill is textiles. And so we're hoping to diverse this, divert this waste stream from landfill by keeping these materials in use locally in Tofino Nucleot as well as on the island. And so we've partnered with Songbird Refuse and Recycling on this project and we're exploring a number of new pathways forward and yeah, we're excited to get that in the works in the next coming year as well. And then um, probably most exciting update for last. A few weeks ago, we finished up um, our first remote shoreline cleanup since COVID hit. And we spent two days out on Vargas Island in partnership with a house at First Nation Territory and BC Parks. And we were able to clean a total of eight and a half kilometers of shoreline and remove almost 2000 pounds of debris from Vargas over the course of two days. And this was in adherence with a whole bunch of new COVID regulations with BC parks on their boats and making sure that everyone from house it and all of surf riders, volunteers, everyone was safe, staying at a distance. And it was really awesome. Everyone came together and it was a huge success and a great couple of days out. And yeah, it was our first remote this summer. So it felt really good to be able to get one of those in despite um, all the restrictions COVID's kind of placed on what we're able to do in person. Um, but yeah, those are all of the uh, Surfrider Pacific Rim updates right now. Does anyone have any questions? Um, Nicole, this is Jennifer. I have a quick question. The 17% of the landfill being textiles. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just curious, like, ballpark, what's the bulk of that? Like, where is that coming from? Is that just me deciding my old jeans can't be used for something else and pitching them? Or is... Is there some source other than that? It's it's largely the commercial sector. Um, hotels, resorts throw out old linens that they can't reuse and things like that. So a large majority of it is, you know, B and B's, resorts, hotels, uh, just with like towels and linens and whatnot. Cool. Thanks. Just a comment to that: um, the SPCA takes all that stuff. Yeah, so we're reaching out to them, to Diabetes Canada, to Return It Recycling, and also trying to figure out some uh, local solutions as well. So 
yeah, we're excited to, to figure out all our new pathways forward with it. Well, Nicole, it's always interesting to your organization because you guys are very passionate about it. And I think we're really fortunate that, uh, you know, you're, you're, I must say, uh, you know, I've never, I haven't met you officially other than through Zoom here, but, um, you know, Lily has a, sets a very high standard and a bar for her, how she's able to get a lot of buy-in from the region. And I think that's what Surf Ride, Surf Rider Pacific Rim actually has to its advantage is uh, people like yourself and Lily that are taking on topics which normally people would love to be able to put some energy into it. And, and again, you may have not heard it officially from us, but I'll say it to you right now that uh, the district is very committed to Surf Rider and these initiatives that you guys take on actually make our life and day-to-day operations quite it makes things easier because you're definitely these subject matters you're on as much as they're very important to day-to-day activities for us as a district uh having a group like yourself that are as committed to do it it definitely uh, um it's just another good fun reason to um uh, for us all to participate in it so thanks for what you're doing and uh these are big subject matters that you're willing to take on that most people don't and uh, we're here to support you so thanks again for making time for us today Oh, of course yeah thanks so much thanks so much for the comments and feedback yeah yeah, we're, yeah working with lily is super awesome and it's definitely over the last few years been awesome to see just how much to and new clueless have become model communities that are so ahead of the curve on these issues and allow us to scale our efforts simply by being that example for other communities and yeah it's incredible to see what happens here with just from the just from the buy-in from the region from yeah. you know local businesses wanting to protect what they love and you know wanting to be engaged on these topics it's it's awesome and it's a it creates a huge snowball effect and i i um that marine debris tracker app i have never heard of it before until i just downloaded it now to have a look but what a great thing to get community buy-in and and make it fun and entertaining so there's there's quite a few people that have um uh, logged into that app community-wide but i think that's something we could definitely work on pushing out too for you Cause that's a great oh, thing for the awesome. community. I'm, sc- I'm That's awesome. You just downloaded it too. You can take it out in your next beach queen. I know. <laughs> I know, man. You're, you're, are you related? To, are you related to Lily by chance? Because you <laughs> honestly, I don't know. It's just like, or she just, you're just a face, and she's uh, you're using her words. I was of, gonna say I could close my eyes, and I'm like, I swear I'm talking to Lily. Any relation? Mako and I just made that. Con- <laughs> no, we're not related, but we we get asked we get asked that a okay. lot. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, mannerisms and everything are similar. Anyway, thanks again. Any questions? Thanks, guys. No, that's totally awesome. Thank you. Toastmasters. Oh, Julie, welcome. I haven't seen Julie in a while. She's there. She's just on mute and. I'm mute. Hang on. Okay. Hi, good. guys. You're like, oh my God, showtime. So, today, you may wonder why I'm all decor. Well, Toastmasters has officially celebrated 25 years out on the West Coast. We started in Tofino. We're now in Ukulet. We welcome Tofino all the time. So, a couple weeks ago, we did a Zoom celebration for our anniversary. And we all rose to the occasion. We had cake through Zoom. We got decorated up. And we had an absolute blast. It was totally fun. We had about 15 people in attendance. And it was just really, really neat to celebrate our existence here on the West Coast. We're a struggling club. We're few in numbers at this point. And we actually just started a new partnership with the club in Port Alberni, as they are struggling too. So now we meet as two clubs on the same night, Monday nights from 6.30 till eight. And I just got a request from another group to join us as well. So now we have probably eight members in attendance at a meeting, which brings much more fun and inspiration to each meeting. So we're just going through the motions right now of learning the new steps of working together, uh, being two separate clubs, but also meeting um, keeping ourselves separate, but also work together as a team and uh, see where the future holds for us in the next uh, little while with the whole COVID thing. It's been uh, quite interesting. We have about four or five members that want to join, but just don't feel comfortable doing it on Zoom. 
So I hope to come out uh, in the next couple of weeks. As most of you know, I'm not in Hewlett right now, but Marilyn and I are hoping to host an in-person COVID-friendly meeting with the people that would like that and then zoom out to the people in Port Alberni. So lots of exciting things to, uh, to tell you about um, with our membership here in Euculet. Thank you, Julie. And uh, I didn't realize you were going to dress up for it, but uh, you did a really good job. I heard, I heard the, uh, the celebration went really well. You were on that, right? Yeah. Great. It was yeah. a lot of fun. Okay. We won't think less of you. It's all good. Does anyone have questions? Any questions for Julie? Nope. Thanks for again, Julie, for, um, um, thanks for your commitment and, um, why is that like this? Is there a back feed or is that me? How's that? Okay, there we go. Um, thanks again, Julie, and thanks for making time for today. We really appreciate it. Thank you. T.U. Denise. It looks like you're on the top of Radar Hill right now and uh, get the camera. Okay, the sun was shining in my office earlier and apparently it was creating a ghost effect, so I had to move. Um, uh, well, uh, it's definitely been an interesting year for Tourism Euclid. I'm sure most people are aware that um, just in relation to, to COVID, the tourism industry in BC, and not just in BC, but worldwide has been you know, some areas are have been profoundly uh, devastated than than others. Um, but we as a community have um, we've you know I to you early on basically stopped doing all marketing as soon as we received information from Bonnie Henry uh, and the province noting about closures and uh, moving through phases. So we stopped advertising to consumers and we didn't do anything over the course of the summer. We've started doing a small amount moving into winter and fall, specifically targeting uh, Vancouver Island um, snowbirds and really keeping it extremely focused and localized to an area that the board felt was was safe and um, was still able to help our businesses locally to the area keep their doors open. Um, it's um, it's been it's definitely been interesting in a in a funding capacity for us. Um, as most of you know, our funding is determinant on hotel stays and how many people come to the community. So. Um, we had to, and, and some of the uh, societies here on the call, um, unfortunately, because we had to um, reduce our budget so drastically, uh, we had to uh, withhold funding from quite a few um, organizations just, uh, and we're hoping, you know, we're going to talk, to, I'm going to talk to the board about it for next year as well to see if there's something that we're able to do, but it may come down to in-kind support. Um, just because, um, again, we have to, in order to be viable, um, through this process, we need to make sure that we're being strategic with our funds. Um, it's surprising how many DMOs that were similar to Tourism Euclid, um, how how hard hit they have been and and just really on the brink of, of not being able to sustain their own organizations uh, because the funding that they require comes from hotel stays with limited other streams of revenue. Um, so over the summer, um, we, even though all of our hotels were, they did a, a great job of maintaining all of their COVID um, protocols um, with their new normals, we operated at the, you know, the running totals were around 70 to 75%. But again, that is not based on historical year over year. That was on modified changes to their properties and anything else that kind of was going on. Um, the and so you know and obviously while everything did kind of seem busier in town i think seeing a lot of people standing outside had a lot you know people were more out in uh, out and around town um the visitor center itself we had to close that facility down uh, extremely uh we were only allowing eight people in there parks canada has still not come into the building yet that we share with them 
Um, so normally being the second busiest visitor center on the island, um, our numbers went from about seeing anywhere between six to 800 people a day over the course of the summer to about 150. So the volume, and we were only allowing one person per guest in. So the, the volume alone and the way that they had to operate it at the junction, um, was drastically reduced as well. We had very little blowback. There are some people who unfortunately just didn't appreciate the steps that were being put in place, but, um, on the whole, everybody was, was quite respectful. Um, we have a brand new board. Um, we have one, our chair, Brian Congdon, um, is one of our original board members from the previous board, but we do have a whole new board now that came in literally within a week of COVID hitting. So, so their whole process of making all these big plans from our new strategic planning session that we had in the fall kind of got put on hold until about 10 days ago. But um, they did a great job. Uh, we have representation from the Wall Pacific Trail and the aquarium on our board now, as well as our regular hotel accommodators and some more uh, restaurants, which has been fantastic. And um, uh, we have, so like I mentioned, 10 days ago, we had a brand new strategic planning session and it was to look at our new uh, pillar, our new purpose statement, as well as three guiding pillars, which focus around not just um, tourism Euclid being sustainable, but just how tourism in general can remain sustainable in an economic way throughout the community um, environment. So environmentally, socially, as well as um, economically. And we started that conversation uh, 10 days ago. And so tourism Euclid will be moving forward in a way that all of our marketing, everything that we do will start to have more of a um, responsible tourism message focused on it. So the people who are coming here are uh, that, or that we are targeting to come here are going to be more like-minded as to how the community wants to see its community, see Euclid evolve over time. Um, and um, with that, we've also hired a new creative agency that started about three weeks ago. And so they have been tasked with a very large order of, um, of taking these new guiding principles for our organization and transitioning them into, um, into um, actionable items for us. So it's very exciting. Um, and uh, yeah, if anybody has any questions about anything, um, feel free to let me know. Any questions? Any questions from any of the participants for Denise? Sorry, Denise, nothing earth shattering from this end. But again, um, I think I think you really highlighted the fact is it is a whole new board member, a new board and um, and how fitting with COVID-19 before us and they're bringing some new ideas to the table. And I think you guys are handling it um, most excellent. And, and thank you. So. I just have a comment. Yeah, I just have a comment. Um, when we did our when I was part of the street one, so was Mako part of the strategic plan planning, and it was great to see that it was all the community. There was so many different people from different walks of life and different businesses and so forth. But we were so, we had all had the same vision, so it was very community based, and that was really nice to see. Yes. Oh, I was supposed to second that. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a great comment, Larry. Thank you. <laughs> Keep up the good work, Denise. And I know uh, at the end of the day, the decisions you, your group are doing are totally community minded. And uh, we just happen to live in a beautiful spot that everybody wants to come to. And now it's almost uh, putting our gloves up a little bit and just running to make sure that we protect what we have at all levels from the environment like uh, Nicole just said, or really just those, you know, from the citizens themselves being able to have a place that we can experience every day and enjoy. So, um, and that's that's a tall order for your for your organization to do, but you guys are up for it and, and thanks again. Yeah, we really wanna to aim towards, you know, like th that goal really is to try to find that that balance of, of, you know, supporting our businesses and a primary economic driver in our community, but also being respectful to what the communities you know what the community members want too because at the end of the day we all do live here so it it is a very tall order but my board is up for it as am i so you know it'll take some time but the you know the needle is moving in the right direction so i think that's um i think that's just positive in its own right from there so no yeah. it continues to move in that direction and that's all we can do so thank you 
You cool it aquarium. Do we have one for the aquarium? Lori, are you uh, triple? Are you doing a triple uh, tonight? Oh, or Mr. Lyons? Hello there, it's Jeff. Jeff, how come you're not uh, using your? How come you're not showing your lovely face? Uh, I've got a little decal that's far better looking than me, um, <laughs> so we'll go with that. I'm on a cell phone. Apparently, it doesn't work. Okay. Anyway, I just question why aquarium as an A comes last, but I guess you're saving the best for last. So here we go. And I'm pleased to report that the aquarium is doing very well. Obviously, we had a tough time after opening in March, necessitating a COVID closure mid-March, but we survived and we regrouped. And with a strong COVID protocol, we're able to reopen in mid-June and that was really exciting, and hopefully the visitors appreciated it, as some of the locals hope, hopefully. Um, visitation numbers obviously were lower, uh, starting below 50% of 2019, um, which was to be expected given the protocols and the limited numbers. But uh, the people that came in, I think, judging by the reports, enjoyed it and were appreciative. In fact, in October, we're actually seeing higher numbers of visitors over 2019. Mm. Um, I, I think that's many of us are seeing higher numbers this fall. So uh, we will take it from there and just hope that November progresses as well. Thanks to the federal subsidy of $150,000 and generous donations from many people, we've been able to keep all staff on full time for this year and hoping to go through till the end of the fiscal year, which is um, March 31st. And that, that we hope to see us break even by that March 31st fiscal year end. So that is really positive relative to what we were anticipating earlier this year. Um, we have a closure schedule for November the 30th and the release is December the 5th but it's still to be determined how and how we will manage that, whether there will be people invited, if we can do that. So my suggestion is stay tuned to the uh, web page and we'll see what we can figure out as a way of getting the kids to enjoy the release. Other notable things, our curator, Laura, had a baby girl last month. And Patrick, the acting curator, found time to get married last week. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I want to thank Lara Kemps for stealing Rory, Laurie from the UAS to the Chamber of Commerce. We'll forgive you. Um, anyway, other than that, we'd, I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank Laurie for her contribution to the aquarium and wish her good luck in the chamber. And I think that's about all I can scratch up to report to people. So if there's any questions, feel free to fire them. Okay, you guys, fire a couple to Jeff. No. And hearing none, I will hand it back to you. Something's coming your way, Jeff. You're not going to get off that easy. Uh -oh. Does this work? <laughs> Okay, it's not a question, it was just a comment. I had the fortunate uh, experience to spend a week with a whole bunch of people from Alberta um, visiting here on the West Coast last week, and they made the aquarium amongst a few other places in Euclid one of their stops when they left Tofino to spend the day in Euclid, and they couldn't stop raving about it. So, yeah, that's all. Thank you. I'll pass that on to the staff. I'm just going to say thank you, Jeff. You know, you're a yet another board that you're committed to, and um, in general, we're we're fortunate to have you around. So, um, and we're fortunate to have the aquarium. I mean, it's uh, just a wonderful, wonderful asset to our community, and I'm glad to hear that uh, you're supportive of the departure of Lori over to the Chamber of Commerce. And I'm thinking that uh, maybe the aquarium will be the future uh, growing uh, the, the the plantation for other other employees to go out throughout the community so now you're not just releasing fish now you're releasing uh, uh other other employees to other other places in town so it's great no it'll be a condition of employment that they do not go and work for anybody related to councillors okay perfect thanks again jeff appreciate it cheers thank you 
Okay, drum roll. Food bank on the edge. You're still on mute, Chris. Just unmute yourself. Okay, there. Can you hear me now? You betcha. I was wondering what alphabet you were using because all the letters went by me. Okay. Food bank on the edge. Hi, everybody. It's Chris Martin here. Um, so, yeah, I've heard a lot of what happened with COVID with everybody, but it uh, didn't happen with the food bank. We kept going um, in operations. Um, and... Uh, I don't know where to start. Okay, so we had our AGM in July. Uh, we retained our whole board. We did not um, have any of our members or public invited. So it was a closed uh, AGM. Um, so we're all the same uh, food bank directors. Uh, so long story short, uh, when COVID started, we did not have an increase in clients. And we thought for months that we were the odd people out. Um, however, in September, I met uh, the new board chair of Food Banks BC. He came here to the West Coast to, he was doing all the tour. And he asked me what happened uh, when COVID happened. And I was kind of embarrassed because we really didn't, we were getting lots of money and we were getting lots of food but we didn't have the people to match it. So we, we just got this huge inventory of food and I told him this and he said, every food bank in our network experienced the same thing. So we, it, it went boiled down to the CERB, people were getting money, right? They could afford food. Um, the First Nations communities, the indigenous communities were locked down and, and which they still are. So. I didn't know what to anticipate, but at least I felt like we were more normal, that we were, you know, not seeing our numbers. However, this is the third Tuesday of the month, and for three consecutive Tuesdays, we have seen double digits. So I think we're now seeing the spike that we had anticipated. Uh, the CERB quit, you know, whatever, whatever translation that is. Um, so we're finally getting back on track. Uh, so we're pretty excited because we were we really have a lot of food to give away. Uh, we were getting regular monthly donations from the Tofino Uclula Culinary Guild, beautiful produce uh, donations. And those are going to be ongoing every month um, for the foreseeable future because um, they have the money to do it and they've earmarked that money for us. Um, also, uh, we did away with the free store. So when Bronwyn was talking about the Army Navy and they did their um, free store initiative this summer and we got rid of a lot of our stuff um, through them and then we decided uh, because the food was coming in that we could not uh, operate the free store anymore so we liquidated our free store to use for food storage and that has worked very well um, so uh, moving forward we're getting ready for our winter distribution which will entail we've done everything outside since covid but for winter time, we've uh, reinforced the deck a little bit to it to so the clients will be more comfortable on the deck. But all of our distribution is going to happen on the deck. The volunteers will be inside the building. The clients will be allowed to come on the deck, um, probably two at a time, one to register for a hamper, one to receive a hamper. And there'll be markings on the deck uh, for social sort of safe distancing. Etc. So we're getting that all kind of set up. We haven't had to um, do it yet, but we're getting ready to do that. Uh, regarding the Christmas hamper. So you guys know this is coming on our big time of year where we do a lot of uh, exciting things. We get the majority of our monetary donations, our food donations, all during November, December, January in that frame, in that time frame. However, uh, because of COVID, uh, we are putting some new parameters around the event. First of all, we're going to be at the community center, not the UAC hall this year. So we'll have lots of space. It's going to be on Monday, December 21st. Um, however, we will limit the number of volunteers. So this is going to be disappointing to many community people who bring their families. And it's a party and everybody gets excited and helps out. But this year, we're going to restrict it to 
only our volunteers, our directors and volunteers and their partners. So I know Abby's gonna be really disappointed, um, but we just have to um, respect the, the protocols uh, for COVID. And uh, so that's gonna happen. We don't know yet how big the Christmas hamper is going to be. I have um, sent an email over to uh, the Clulet First Nation and asked what their plan is, if they're going to do their own Christmas hampers over there or if they are going to be included in ours. So based on that answer, I haven't heard back yet, but based on that response, we'll determine how big our Christmas hamper is going to be. Historically, almost half of our Christmas hampers have been uh, for Hitatsu. So it'll make a big difference in you know how much, how much we give out. Um, so I'll be waiting to hear, uh, hopefully, a response soon on that, because in November is when we start doing our big plan. Um, let's see. I think over still, and then we got, so we got reinstated for our weekly donation from Zoe's Bakery, which is really appreciated. Um, I think that's, I've covered all my notes. And... Um, the, oh, stuff the cruiser. So I've, I've coordinated with the co-op and the local RCMP. Uh, we will be having a stuff the cruiser event. It will be different. Uh, we won't have a lot of social interaction with the people donating to us. However, we, I've spoken with uh, Const uh, Constable Moore, who's my neighbor, and we think we can do it. We think we can set it up so that there's it's safe, it's everybody will be in masks and gloves and we'll um, just have people donate to us and put stuff on a table and then have somebody else put it in the cruiser, that kind of thing. Um, and then when we take the food down there, we'll have to let it sit for a day or two and then we'll weigh it. Anyway, so we're getting, we're gearing up for Christmas. Um, so hopefully we'll, you know, see what happens along the next month or two. Does anybody have any questions? Any questions? Just a quick one, Chris. Um, yep. Let me know, you know, when you do pick up next week or whatever, um, if you want to do some version of the reverse advent again this year, because I know I that do. was good to target certain things. So I do. And I talked to Lori about that. Mm -hmm. I asked her, I told her that went really well for us, the 12 days of Christmas, the countdown and having an earmarked item each um, day yep. was a beautiful, beautiful initiative. It worked so well for us. We got so much good stuff. And um, we can go over a list of what we would like to ha see that. But you did a great job last year, and I hope we can do it again this year. Yeah, totally on, on yeah. board to do that. Awesome. Thank you. Hi, Chris. It's Mar Marilyn. Woo. Hi. Just wondering how you liquidated your free store. Was that through the <laughs> Army-Navy? Um, yeah, a lot of it was. So when we started the COVID, um, the district, Abby gave us uh, the rec hall to use as storage. So what we did was basically we just moved. We kept getting donations. We still had donations. We were still full of clothing, but then we kept getting them. And so we did utilize the uh, rec hall and we tried to have some semblance of a free store. Uh, during the summer, we'd let people come over one at a time, go through the rec hall. Uh, Barb Forrest, Barbara Forrest is our our main volunteer for sorting. Um, she had it set up where everything was, you know, you could shop basically like at a store. Um, but as time went on, it just was clear that we could not move forward with that. So basically when the Army Navy had their event, uh, we did, I took, I think we had like three loads of stuff come over. They were happy to take it. Um, and it was a lot of good stuff. Uh, so the rest of it that was left we gradually just loaded up when somebody was going across um, to Port Alberni or Nanaimo. Uh, we loaded up, just gradually got rid of everything. Like everything is gone. Um, we, we spent half of September boxing up the rest of the dishes. We had tons of dishes and I put the word out. I tried to get people to come down and get whatever they wanted. Um, so we're basically empty now of of all of that. We did, I took all our diapers. We had um, a lot of diapers and I put, sent them all over to Hitatsu 
because they had 15 babies over there. So we got rid of the diapers. I mean, we're literally 100% food at this point. Um, so that's, yeah, it was just a process, but it was the Army Navy event helped us a lot. So, yeah, that's how we did it. And thank you, Chris. I, you know, it's, again, you know, I keep giving every one of you compliments because it's just that's why um, hearing all that and everybody else hearing it, I, I uh, we're just fortunate again to have you as the kingpin there, and um, and you know that you have one hundred percent support from everybody in the community. Um, so we'll just yeah, we, go ahead. We go. really appreciate it. We feel it. We feel the love all the time. So we're very happy and and we feel very blessed. So thank you to everybody. Perfect. Well, big hugs to you, Chris, and thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Another favorite, Margaret Morrison. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for this opportunity to, to uh, speak to everyone. Um, Chris, I have to say, can, can I come? Can I come? <laughs> Am I one of the volunteers? <laughs> The Christmas hampers is, has been one of uh, one of my family uh, traditions for for many years, but um, so West Coast Community Resources Society, um, boy, COVID um, really did a number for us, and uh, interestingly, similar to the food banks numbers. Um, of course, when, when COVID hit and we had to, to close things down, uh, there were our, some of our routine events such as um, community lunch and um, many of the other drop-in um, opportunities that we've had, the, the women's writing group and other things all had to close down. Um, and hearing some of the numbers from um, ambulance service and uh, the hospital emergency department, um, just the number of calls that they were having um, we kind of expected that many, in particular our transition house, would see similar uh, increase in, in um, requests for service and that didn't happen. So it, it did um, puzzle us for a little while, but um, kind of have the, the sense that maybe um, we'll be part of that next wave in a couple of different ways. Um, so, um, Grant and aid. Um, we were successful in getting a grant and aid last year. Thank you ever so much. Uh, and it was for a free counseling service. Um, and of course that that got started, uh, but just before COVID hit and it, it happened to be a, a very um, timely service to be able to offer. Um, and that service has continued um, with the support of uh, uh, some other grants that we've been able to access. So that's still in, in, uh, in effect. Uh, so it's a local counselor who's able to offer free counseling um, by phone and online um, to people on the West Coast. Um, our annual general meeting is coming up Monday, October 26th and um, open uh, invitation to everyone. And uh, we are looking to um, uh, increase our membership um, and uh, anybody who's ever dealt with a community gaming grant uh, knows that there is a, a formula for determining how many um, paid memberships your your uh, organization needs to be able to be um, eligible for a grant. So we're looking for a few more members. Um, and uh, of course, um, an invitation to the AGM is not dependent on membership. Uh, you just have to request a link and we will be forwarding that. So you got the rest of this week, get in your request for a link to attend the AGM. Um, we're using the uh, Microsoft Teams platform and um, we'll see how that goes. Um, so again, uh, as is true for so many other groups, um, COVID really um, came out of left field and, and uh, caused disruption of many of the routine things that um, one would normally do. So we were able to creatively um, find other ways to be able to continue offering our services. Um, and I commend my staff for being um, very creative in finding ways to be able to continue um, offering their, their services. Um, but some of the, the things that we would normally be looking forward to um, 
in the summer and the fall and especially at Christmas time. So uh, at the moment, our community holiday lunch, which is our big event that um, we look so forward to, um, does not look like it's going to happen this year, certainly not in the, the way that we're normally um, offering to uh, have turkey trimmings for everybody. Um, so uh, I think I put it out there that um, if there was any way to be able to collaborate on um, offering some sort of a holiday um, meal, even if it were sort of in a, a takeaway kit, um, we'd be willing to, to be able to collaborate on something like that, but we can't take it on all by ourselves. Um, let's see. Um, as I was saying about uh, expect some of the things that we're expecting in the next wave. Um, uh, and one of our routine programs is, of course, the tax program. Um, and because there was just recently um, people transitioning from CERB to other possible um, income supplements um, and with GST and other things, I'm expecting that our um, tax program will start to get uh, a lot more um, a lot more requests for service as people discover that you need to have your taxes up to date in order to be eligible for a lot of government services and uh, and different programs. Um, so as we go forward, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the AGM and uh, seeing what happens. We're going to be going into strategic planning um, with the Resource Society and um, um, we have recently started an Instagram account. So if anybody hasn't encountered us on Instagram, I invite you to take a look. And uh, that's it, but I'd be happy to answer any questions if anybody has any. It's tough being at the end of the alphabet. No, isn't don't it? be at the end. It's uh, <laughs> again, you're you're another organization uh, that uh, had spent uh, many years trying to get uh, to where you had, and and I know that um, your services are def de definitely needed in the community. Do you hear me fine? Can you hear me? I don't know what's going on there. I've never had that before. I know it's time. We'll get we'll get Julian on it. Um, <laughs> Again, I know, and I apologize, Margaret, you know, publicly here. I know I haven't crossed paths with you just because we're all busy, busy. But I think, um, you know, informally, it would be nice to be able to sit down and have a coffee with you, maybe outside your picnic bench. It feels like a long time since I've done that. I, I truly just missed your little soups that you used to have weekly. That definitely, you know, g gave me an opportunity personally just to, to do the check and balance. I haven't done in a while. So we'll do a little coffee date here in the next couple of days on a, on a sunny day on, on the picnic bench. But uh, outside of that, I know that you're on the task force, Lara's told me, and I think that you're well versed at what's going on in the district in the background. Um, I know that uh, we appreciate that you're on the task force because your voice and in your lens does matter. And, and I hope that you'll continue to stay on that till we get through these challenging times. And, and as well, as you know, did you make a mention that you're looking for additional board members? Oh, uh, we're Never. always looking to, um, Yep. Anybody who expresses interest, we've got a board orientation package, a little, little primer on the Resource Society. Um, yes, board members, uh, anybody who's interested, we welcome them to approach. Uh, it was memberships. Membership, um, got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for that. And again, just a big thank you, Margaret, for doing what you're doing. Yep, most definitely. Thanks. Multiplex, I know we have one there. West Coast Multiplex, welcome. Sue? Michelle. Michelle. Hi. Hi, yes, so Michelle, the West Coast Multiplex Society. So capital funding, you know, we had applied in, um, in 2019 and uh, only in August this year, we, uh, we were notified anyways that, um, that it was not uh, happening for that, that one. Um, you know, we had great, um, the government employees were, you know, very uh, positive and for us to reapply. So um, it was a really quick uh, turnaround for us, but um, it was done. It was successful. We reapplied October 1st. So um, capital funding, um, 
we don't know when we'll hear back again, um, but um, it's in. Hopefully, um, we'll get positive this time. Um, operational funding. Um, we had our golf fundraiser and um, amazing success from uh, the communities. Uh, really, you know, at the beginning, we didn't really know if we were going to host the event because of COVID. And we raised $27,000. So um, we're very uh, grateful and thankful to all the businesses and uh, community members um, that supported us. Um, as for, um, is that all I have? I had written a few notes. Oh yeah, so next year, it's confirmed next year, the golf tournament is September 18. And then um, we're gonna have a table uh, just for fun for Halloween at the Botanical Gardens and just handing out candies to the kids. Um, and that's it. Any questions? Thank you for the update. Any questions from the counselors? I attended your golf golf tournament. It actually was it was a it was a it was a great uh, event, and uh, I'm happy to hear. It obviously, was a bit of a nail biter for your group, not knowing. Uh, if it was going to be successful or not, it's just nice again to see that you've got West Coast support for that initiative. And uh, thanks, Michelle, for doing what you're doing. Thanks for having me. Uh oh, is this the last one? Trail. We got Don. Don's in the house. Wild Pacific Trail. Welcome. Oh, I love it. That's what's going, going to save the world. Literally. There you go, Don. Okay. Can you hear me now? You betcha. Sorry about that. Yeah. So the Wild Pacific Trail, we've been uh, we've been hit uh, with the uh, the traffic uh, metrics for us are uh, the donation box boxes and the uh, the traffic count that we do. Uh, donation boxes, um, our revenue for this year will be down by about two thirds. And that's a <clears throat> fairly good metric uh, for what the visitor traffic has been like. Um, it does appear to be uh, picking up just in the last uh, month or two. Uh, so that, that's positive. Uh, so that said, the, uh, the trail site society is, is still in good shape. We've had, uh, notwithstanding the uh, Donation box declines. We've had good success from Canada Helps and from uh, our grant writing. Um, the Trail Society has uh, made a big, uh, a big, uh, a big push on education and interpretive hikes over the last several years. And 2020 uh, was going to be a big one. We had uh, dedicated. Uh, a fair expansion of our uh, of our funds for uh, uh, an expansion of the interpretive hikes, the educational hikes that we were doing. Obviously, that doesn't work in a COVID uh, kind of world. So we did uh, convert and do a, a bit of a wee tweak to the education program, and uh, we've got uh, what we call the Learn Where You Live uh, videos uh, posted on our website. Um, uh, they're very professionally done. They're extremely educational. I'd urge everybody to take a look at them. Uh, we're not getting the, uh, the counts on the trail in terms of the bodies on the trail, but I can assure you that the hits on the website for that particular feature are way up. And uh, so we've used this 2020 period as uh, a, a period where we can uh, build up a curriculum and build up a set of educational uh, resource materials. We're, uh, we're getting into our planning for 2021 and we're uh, using conservative financial assumptions. We're planning a, uh, um, a program that uh, dollar wise or volume wise will be roughly in 2021, what it was in 2020. So that's a mark of our commitment to the, uh, the education area. Uh, we also have their uh, virtual AGM coming up uh, November 18th. I think somebody else is November 18th as well. Um, we've had uh, some issues with uh, vandalism. Um, 
the trail itself is district property. There are things that are on the trail that the Trail Society has put there. And uh, some of those have been vandalized. Uh, it's been very disconcerting. There was some, a big bit of vandalism on the benches earlier in the year. Uh, somebody stole one of our traffic counters. Um, big Beach, they had some um, vandalism down there. And then we also had the boy sign at the, uh, the lighthouse, which was stolen. You might not have even noticed it because we quickly replaced it. So this, uh, this vandalism is very annoy annoying. And I know with the district uh, down the road planning to get uh, um, control and have facilities at the lighthouse keeper's house and Coast Guard station, it's really an issue um, to keep an eye on. If you're gonna have property out there remotely, uh, and we have talked to Parks and Rec about this, and uh, there's no easy solution to it. Um, but uh, everybody should be aware that vandalism has been a, been a negative. Um, we want to thank the, uh, the district. Uh, the other thing that happened earlier in 2020 is the trail maintenance was moved from a memorandum of understanding with the trail to the district actually uh, taking it in with their superior resources of uh, people and equipment. And by and large, that, that's working uh, very, very well. And uh, we're happy to see the district uh, doing that. Uh, we were fortunate enough to receive a grant and aid, and that was to, uh, um, we were gonna apply that to a, uh, uh, a pilot program connected with our education program. So we'll be reporting on that as we converted the in-person education to um, uh, through the uh, through the videos on the on the website. Um, so Trail Society is happy. Uh, we're we're strong. Uh, looking forward to a good year next year. Uh, God willing, in a fast infield, we'll have more tourists to have face-to-face -face, uh, exchanges with our education program. Trying to make that connection with with nature. But if we don't. Uh, we'll be doing the uh, the virtual sessions and, and again building up that uh, the educational resource uh, communication materials. So um, thank you for your attention. Uh, happy to answer any questions from counselors or anybody else. That was a hint. You didn't want to hear a question from me. So. Okay. Thanks very much. this works if this works thanks so much we just we're having some technical difficulties but we just want to say thank you and that group that i talked about from alberta before they one of the other places that they spent um while they were here was on the trail and all the slugs that were there were very impressive for them i know <laughs> i've said that before but it is a thing and so thank you on the uh on the video uh, one of the early sessions learn where you live there's a whole one on slugs it is amazing. That would <laughs> be the second video. Slots. It could be the second, yeah. So there you go. Okay, I just want to sneak one thing in here because I just got notification, not that the people that we have a captive audience right now aren't busy doing a million other things, but there is a call out for help this weekend for election day. They're now short four people in Euclid to help with the elections. So I just want to put that out there in the universe. Um, I work the uh, the advanced polls. Um, I'll contact them. I might be able to help them out. How's that? Do you guys hear me? Yes, they do. Okay, perfect. Thanks. They turned something down. Uh, well, Pacific Trail. Thanks again, Don. Um, is there anybody that I've missed? No one. Okay. Other than Miss Monteith, you've been listening intently here because I think that you're going to speak to the report part. Is that what you're on? No? Oh, I thought maybe you're going to give a Barkley Community Forest or something. Okay. Um, did I miss something on uh, up so far? They're not on here. They're on here, the list, but they're just not on. Yeah, and um, Mr. Boyson, did I miss anything? Are we doing okay so far other than we're running out of time? 
I think we were just we I covered the topic there that was coming at the very end of the agenda there about the uh, grant process. And I think you all have that. Uh, again, it's just pretty simple, and we've changed the uh, bylaw and the application. And we do another meeting. Again, I, I honestly, I just those that hung out, and where it's duly noted that we'll remove the word you clue it from your organizations, whatever you're on here. So those like the aquarium will be switched around. We'll have a little fun with it. So look, I know Nicole will be on it for, for the one when we meet in six months. It's just a big opportunity to do a big again, one more. I've said it many times to you all. We thank you for what you're doing. It's a great venue that all the council are able to listen to each one of you. Uh, you know, this is the, the reason for this format is for us to all engage with each other. And remember, um, if you have any kind of questions or concerns, we're very much accessible. Uh, although we may not go to all your monthly meetings and stuff, you know, our, uh, you can write us a letter, you can reach out to us, we can, you know, have a coffee with you anytime. Um, and I think to date, I haven't heard anything negative. I'm, you know, I'm a little bit biased on this new system that if the system is working, but do feel free to give us any kind of frustrations. Uh, that you may be having feedback, positive or negative. And I think that is what we pretty much heard today. What's that? <laughs> feedback, feedback. Feedback, yeah, a lot of feedback through the microphone. I see your slug. So um, anything from any counselors? Hearing, seeing nothing. So, uh, and a question period. I guess it's off to question period. I, are there any questions that uh, you'd like to ask? No. Okay. We're adjourned and we'll see you on the streets and have yourself a great evening. Thank you again for attending. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Bye. Leave. Okay, I wish to call to order the special meeting of council at uh, 535 on October the 20th. I would like to make the motion to take a five minute break. Please second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed carried, thank you.
I can hear you. Okay, thank you. Um, bye -bye. We have pretty call it to order. So I just would like the council would like to acknowledge the Uklu Thought First Nation on whose traditional territories the district of Uklu operates. Notice of video recording. Audience members and delegates are advised that this proceeding is being conducted via Zoom webinar and broadcast on YouTube. Zoom webinar and YouTube may store data on foreign servers. And we have one addition, to one lead item to the agenda. Does everybody have that? Mm -hmm. Okay, looking for approval of the agenda with the one item. So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. No mayor's announcement at this point, other than as, again, an opportunity to celebrate and thank all all of you for our two years together and it's uh it's definitely been a, a lot of challenges before us and i and i'm really really proud of the fact that we're going down this path together so just you know it's great so there we go no tears okay and um no hugs okay uh, joseph you can help me out here this uh, late item where am i supposed to put this in oh seven point two thank you i see it there Correspondence, we have 7.1, Water Main Connection, Willowbray Road. I think probably Mr. Greg, you'd like to speak to it? Uh, three Your Worship, I can just add a little bit of context. Um, so this is a request that we've received from the Ukulothot um, government. Uh, Corey Rich, who's their economic development officer, um, he may be listening in uh, to the meeting, but he sent his regrets. He can't attend. I think right now he's juggling a toddler in dinner preparation, and just the timing of the meeting didn't work. But uh, it's um, I, I can just add a little bit of context to this, that um, as council is aware, we're, we're sort of the regional water purveyor and have a water main that runs down Peninsula Road. And the uh, cent part particularly the Waya Point Resort area does not have a water connection. And so uh, the Uclothat government is approaching under the what's referred to as the syrup grant, which is one of a number of grant streams that are open right now. It's, it's one, although the district is, is, um, is uh, applying for uh, several grants right now that are under preparation. It seems like there's a grant a day almost. Um, this particular one um, we're not applying for, so it's not like we're competing. And actually, I think there's a strong argument to say that this particular water main would be you know, good for the community in sort of the broader sense. Um, and so the really what it does, it, it would allow them to have a you know, proper potable water connection, a water main run uh, down to the Waia area. But also our, our fire chief notes that this would be a great thing for improving the, uh, the safety of the area, that there are no hydrants down there having no water main. And so uh, we do provide fire service um, down there, but really our, our ability to, uh, to uh, deal with a structure fire would be extremely limited given that there's no water main or hydrant to connect to. So this was seen as very much a positive thing. Um, uh, beyond that, if there are any sort of you know questions, um, yeah, I could certainly try and answer them. But I think this is something that certainly at the staff level we've discussed and, and seems like a, a great thing to support. So they're looking for a motion for support for the grant um, from, from council. And I, I think it's great. I honestly, um, we, we know the importance of our relationship with uh, with our neighbors in Uclu Thought Government, and uh, we're more than honored and, and um, to be able to support them however we can. And everybody has the motion before us. Mm -hmm. Does someone who would like to move that motion, oh. Councillor Cole? That the Uclu District of the Uclu Council enthusiastically supports the Uclu Thought Government in its application for the Community Economic Recovery Infrastructure Program grant for extension of water infrastructure from Willowbury Road to Y Point. Thank you. I'll like enthusiastically second it. <laughs> Perfect. Sorry, we don't have the balloons. I feel like we should have like a big balloon thing here when you just put that word in there. I love it. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Wonderful. And thank you to staff for uh, moving that along and working with the Uclua Thought Government. That's definitely something that um, we're proud to do. We do have a second uh, item there under correspondence 7.2. 
open letter to Dr. Henry from Denman Island Doctor as correspondence. Okay. So obviously when we receive it as correspondence, I just like to make the statement um, that uh, in the last seven months here, um, this council with, uh, with working with our task force recommendations that we have uh, provided the best silence available to us and, uh, and made our decisions that we've done on a daily basis by our task force and through this council. And, um, and we will continue to do that and protect not only our residents, but our economy going forward. Okay, and yeah, oh yeah, if you'd like to make a general comment, go ahead. Just that uh, Euclid is short for people to help with voting on Saturday. So if there, I'm going to uh, ask if anybody is listening that would be interested in that, that they can contact the recruitment in Port Alberni. And if you don't have that number, you can just send me a message and I'll get, you, get it to you. Thank you, Councillor Cole. Hearing anything? Okay, we are adjourned.